to some degree, the entirety of the system, as far as I understand, is written in various variants of Lisp. So my favorite programming language is still Lisp. I don't program in it in much anymore because you know the world has, in majority of its system has moved on. Like everybody respects Lisp, but many of the systems are not um, written in Lisp anymore. But Psych, as far as I understand, maybe you can correct me, there's a bunch of Lisp in it. Yeah, so it's based on uh, Lisp code that we produced. Most of the programming is still going on in a dialect of Lisp. And then the for efficiency reasons, that gets automatically translated into things like Java um, or C. Nowadays, it's almost all translated into Java because Java has gotten good enough that uh, that's that's really all we need to do. So it's translated into Java, and then Java is compiled down to um, bytecode. Yes. Okay. So that, that's sort of that's a that that um, that's a you know it's a process that probably has to do with the fact that when Psych was originally written, and you build up a powerful system, like there is some technical depth you have to deal with, as is the case with most powerful systems that span years. Um, have you ever considered? This this would help me understand because from my perspective, so much of the value of everything you've done with Psych and Psychorp is the is the is the knowledge. Have you ever considered just like throwing away the code base and starting from scratch? Not really throwing away, but sort of moving it to uh, like throwing away that technical debt, starting with a more updated programming language. Is that throwing away a lot of value or no? Like, what's your sense? How much of the value is in the silly software engineering aspect and how much of the value is in the knowledge? So development of, of programs in Lisp um, precedes, um, I think, somewhere between 1,000 and 50,000 times faster than development in any any of what you're calling um, modern or improved computer languages. Well, there's other functional languages like, you know, Clojure and all the, there, there's, but I mean, I'm with you. I, I, I like Lisp, I just wonder how many great programmers there are. There's still like. Yes, so, so it is true when a new inference programmer comes on board, they need to learn um, some of Lisp. And in fact, we have a subset of Lisp, which we call cleverly sub L. <laughs> which is really all they need to learn. And so the programming actually goes on in sub L, not in full Lisp. And so it does not take programmers very long at all to learn uh, sub L. And that's something which can then be translated efficiently into uh, Java. And for some of our programmers who are doing, say, user interface work, then they never have to even learn okay. sub L. They just have to learn APIs into the, the basic uh, psych engine. So you're not necessarily f feeling the burden of like, it's it's extremely efficient. There's, um, that's not a problem to solve. Okay. Right, right. The other thing is, remember that we're talking about hiring programmers to do inference who are programmers interested in effectively automatic theorem proving. Right. And so those are people already predisposed to representing things in logic and so on. And Lisp really was the programming log language um, based on logic that John McCarthy and others um, who developed it basically create took the the formalisms that Alonzo Church and other um, philosophers, other logicians, um, had come up with, and basically said, "Can we basically make a programming la language which is effectively logic?" Mm -hmm. And so, since we're talking about reasoning in about expressions written in this logical, epistemological language, and we're doing operations which are effectively like theorem-proving type operations and so on. There's a natural impedance match between Lisp and yeah. the, the knowledge the way it's represented. So I, I guess you could say it's a perfectly logical language to use. Oh, yes. And okay, I'll, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll even let you uh, get away with that. Fun. Okay, thing. I, I appreciate no, I it. Like that. So I'll probably use that in the future without uh, without credit. Without credit. But no, I Excellent. think I think the, uh, the 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 point is that the 
the language you program in isn't really that important. Mm -hmm. um, it's more that you have to be able to think in terms of, for instance, creating new helpful HL modules and how they'll work with each other and um, looking at things that are taking a long time and coming up with new specialized data structures that will make this efficient. So um, let me just give you one very simple example, which is when you have a transitive relation like larger than, this is larger than that, which is larger than that, which is larger than that. So the first thing must be larger than the, the last thing. Whenever you have a transitive relation, um, if you're not careful, if I ask whether this thing over here is larger than the thing over here, I'll have to do some kind of graph walk or theorem proving that might involve like five or 10 or 20 or 30 steps. Mm -hmm. But if you store, redundantly store, the transitive closure, the Kleene star of that transitive relation, now you have this big table, but you can always guarantee that in one single step, you can just look up whether this is larger than that. Um, and so um, we, um, there are lots of cases where storage is cheap today, and so by having this extra redundant data structure, we can answer this commonly occurring type of question very, very efficiently. And let me give you one other um, analogy, analog of that, uh, which is something we call rule macro predicates, which is we'll see this complicated rule and we'll notice that things very much like it syntactically come up again and again and again. So we'll create a whole brand new relation or predicate or function that captures that and takes maybe not two arguments, takes maybe three, four, or five arguments, and so on. Um, and now we have effectively um, converted some complicated if-then rule that might have to have inference done on it into some ground atomic formula, which is just a... Um, the name of a relation and a few arguments and so on. Mm -hmm. And so converting commonly occurring types or schemas of rules into brand new predicates, brand new functions, turns out to enormously speed up the inference process.